My name is Peter Fisher and welcome to another MySQL console tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at inserting records in a MySQL table. So we're in the console right now and if I was to describe the customer table we can see the table's structure. So in this table we've got several fields here and some of them have default values. So for instance the is active, the gender, the title, the created date and the updated date. They all have default values. Now what that means is that for um, every record that gets entered into the into the table without a um, one of these fields supplied the default value will be used. So if I go and insert a record that doesn't have the is active field then its value will be set to zero and likewise if I supply a, va a record that doesn't have the title then its value will be set to Mr. Other things to note here is that the ID field is a primary key and it's got an extra setting of auto increment. Now basically what that means is that for every record that gets added to, the, to this table without the ID supplied, its value will be incremented based on the last uh, inserted ID. So the first one will be one, the second one will be two and so forth. Um, other things to note is that the uh, the updated date has its uh, has an extra setting of on update current timestamp. Now we don't need to worry about that too much today because that's uh, an on update trigger. So that will change the value of the uh, of the updated date to the current timestamp when the record is updated. Now we're inserting records, so we don't need to worry about that too much. Okay, so let's get to it. So we're going to insert a record into uh, the customer table. And it's quite verbose. You literally do um, insert into, and then you supply the customer name, or well, the table name, which is customer. Um, and then what we need to do is, is open up a bracket. We're going to run that on another line. And we're going to supply all the fields that we want to um, associate values to. So I'm going to do two examples. The first example I'm going to insert a record with all the value that the field supplied and then on the second example I'll only supply the the minimum set of fields that this uh, this table can use. So let's um, let's add a comma separated list of all the fields. So for ID, first name, last name, email, is active gender title uh, created date and updated date now these don't need to be in the order that they're added into this uh, this table uh, they could be in any order so updated date right that looks good to me so i'm just double checking that that uh, each field is spelt correctly and they they're, they're separated by a comma which they are so I'm going to open up another line and I'm going to close that bracket off the next thing we need to do is supply a list of values or records that we want to um, insert into this table and we do that by quite simply doing values and then we open up a bracket now for every record that we want to add to this table we have a bracketed list like so, okay? But we're only gonna put in one for now. So I'm going to open up another line and then we need to supply all the values that are associated to the field. So for example, the first value here will be the ID. So um, as it's uh, an integer of 11, I'm going to just put in one. And then the next one is the first name. Now the first name is Varchar with a size of 30. So that's, needs to be in uh, quotes so I'm just going to have Peter and then last name is Fisher then what have we got the email which is just a, a dummy email so tester at test.com and then the is active which is an integer with a size of one which means that it can be one or two or three or four but it can't be 12 or 10 or 316 Okay, so we're just going to supply that of one. And then we're going to, what's the next? The gender, which I will put as male. And then the title, I'll just use the default, which is Mr. 
Okay, now we're, we've got to the created date and the updated date. So for these, I'm going to use the MySQL function of now. Now that's going to return the current timestamp that the function is executed on. So that's, that's fine because that's what we need, the current timestamps. So I'm just going to double check. And what I'm doing here is I'm making sure that each of these values are associated with each of the, uh, the fields that are supplied which is fine and making sure that the, the, um, the quotes are in the right places and the commas are separating each one. That looks good to me. So I'll open up another line and then I'll close the bracket. Now, as I said before, if I wanted to add another value, I would just keep doing that, um, you know, adding uh, records as I go. But for now, I'm only going to do the one. So let's insert that. Okay, so that's uh, that's ran. One query was uh, one row has been affected. So I'm going to just clear the screen, and then do a quick select all from, and then the uh, the, the customer table. Okay, so as we can see, that's the 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 first record that's been inserted. So let's insert another record, but only use the minimum amount amount of fields that are required for this table. So let's uh, clear that screen again and go describe customer again. So let's just see what are the minimum amount of fields that we can use. So we don't need the updated date. We don't need the created date because they've got the default of current timestamp. We don't need the title because that will be set to Mr. We don't need gender because that will be set to male. We don't need is active because that's set to zero. We also don't need the ID because that will be auto incremented if we don't supply it. So the first name, last name and email, um, they don't have default values and they're not nullable. Uh, you see here that they, their null is set to, to no, which means that they are required. So just to test that out, we'll do insert, insert into and then customer and we're going to just have the um, for now we're just going to insert the first name and we're going to say values and we're just going to put in um, dummy okay so we're just going to insert the first uh, record with just the first name and we're going to see if we can get away with just just doing that and if we press enter we can see that we get the error of last underscore name doesn't have a default value. Okay, which it doesn't because it's set to null and it cannot be null. So let's put in the last name. And we're going to just put in Rogers. And we can see that now we have the error of field email doesn't have a default value. So I'm just going to put in the email field and then just supply a dummy email address, dummy at, um, I don't know, hotmail.com. And yes, we can see that the record has now been inserted. So that's been inserted with the minimum amount of fields required for this this database for this table. Now, um, if this um, when we run a select, we'll be able to see that uh, the updated and the created dates have been set to the current timestamp, which is the timestamp that this query has been um, executed in. Uh, the title should be male and the sorry the gender should be male the title should be mr and the is active should be set to zero also the id should be incremented which means that uh, its value should also be two so let's just go and select all from customer oh actually i'm going to just do that on another line select all from customer and yes, we can see that the second record was added with the ID of two. So that's been set through the auto increment extra setting. Um, the is active is set to zero. The gender is set to male and the title is set to Mr. And the created and updated dates have been changed. 
Thank you for watching. Please click the like button if you found it useful and make sure to subscribe to get the next tutorial. If you have any comments, questions or queries, then please leave them in the comment section below. Alternatively, you can tweet them to my Twitter handle, which is PFWD. Thanks again and I'll see you soon.